Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 233, I want to talk about ways that you can improve the awareness of business continuity and your business continuity strategies in your organization. This is really thinking about how can you get leaders more engaged? How can you help stakeholders understand what's going on? How can you drive awareness across the organization? So I have five key points for you to think about, and this is based on a recent article from the Business Continuity Institute in London. The first is to think about how you can integrate business continuity awareness across all of your organizational levels to identify bottlenecks and potential issues. I would argue here that you should talk with your internal communications team and really look at what are the communication vehicles and methods that are available to you. So if I think about the typical organization right now, you probably have an intranet where you can post articles like your internal news website. There's probably some kind of newsletter that goes out to employees that contains content or links back to content that's on that intranet. There's, um, you're probably using Microsoft Teams or Slack or some type of persistent chat tool where you may be able to post articles and such. There may be other newsletters in your organization, but using all of these different channels are ways that you can improve awareness of business continuity in your organization. Some companies even have internal podcasts and video opportunities and those can help you as well. The second is to really think about coming at this from two different directions. The first is how do you drive employee engagement to have a more proactive culture around business continuity and crisis management? So you're coming at this bottoms up approach, but also what's your leadership top down approach to drive that down throughout the organization? So I think about looking for opportunities to present in your organization. I think about that once or twice a year opportunity that you have to talk about your program to your senior executives and your board and how you can use that to drive awareness from the top and the bottom. The third is to think about the value of creating a healthy environment for dialogue where you can address and improve critical issues. For me, this often comes to thinking about the governance processes that we've put into place for business continuity and crisis management for resilience in the organization. So whether that's a, you have a critical risk committee or you have a business continuity or resilient steering committee, you've set up some type of place where you can have these important critical conversations at a leadership level and be able to drive those results that you're attempting to achieve inside the organization. The fourth is that you use your exercises as a way to enhance proactive thinking, to drive your strategies forward, and use this to help formulate solutions amongst the team. I often think strategically about exercises in a way of, um, as we're thinking about the scenario that we wanna develop, what are, where can I use that to leverage some of the issues that we're facing in the organization? So for example, one of our clients uh, had a particular uh, challenge in their organization because they couldn't get buy-in to implement better availability, high availability, and DR strategies for what's essentially an API interface. Um, it's a, it was a critical part of their product, and it's how their product talked with other internal systems at clients and with key third parties that supported the work that their customers did. This relied on hundreds of servers and API endpoints and VPN connections that were out there. And they a lot of this technology was a decade or more old, and it wasn't really engineered for the kind of availability and DR strategies that they needed. So we made this the centerpiece of a multi-day cybersecurity simulation that we conducted, where we essentially had that system uh, compromised and encrypted in a ransomware attack. And it instantly raised the level of concern around this system because what we constructed was a very realistic scenario. And when it got to the executive team to talk through, do I pay the ransom, do I not pay the ransom, what are my options for recovery? Well, they didn't really have any options for recovery because they had never invested in making the engineering changes necessary. So one of the key lessons learned coming out of that exercise for their leadership team was we have to resolve this technology issue. We have to re-engineer this system to make sure that it's highly available and that we have an effective actual DR strategy that we can lean into 
if this ever happened to us in real life. That was a 12 to 18 month long project and a pretty significant capital investment. But the exercise is what really got that done for them. They realized that this was a key gap for them that they needed to address. So leverage your exercises as a way to drive awareness of the challenges and issues that you need to address in your organization. Lastly, we're big fans of using surveys inside of the, an organization. So you can make use of regular anonymous questionnaires to gather feedback on challenges in the organization, um, but also getting feedback on your program. And together, these help you build a more resilient organization. The way that we typically use surveys is when we're at the end of the business continuity life cycle. So we're finishing, you know, team has updated their plan. They've had their tabletop exercise and now they're working on uh, you know, they're moving forward with any changes they need to make after the exercise, part of what they get is a survey to complete. And we're asking some candid questions about other training or exercises they would like to see, um, their thoughts on the process, was the process, um, did they view the process as value added to the organization or was it a waste of time? How did we do facilitating the process for them um, as the managed service provider? And we use this to really garner feedback and then grow and shift the program to just keep them maturing, building a more resilient organization. That's it for this week's edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.